Hi there, Martin Bailey here. Today I'm going to walk you through a black and white conversion in Capture One Pro 11, showing how I take this photograph and turn it into this. So as you can see, I, I like nice contrasty black and whites quite a lot of the time. And uh, so we've got a bit, little bit to do. The first thing that we're going to do, of course, is convert the image to black and white. And we can do that under the black and white section, enable black and white. And I often also use the color information to make a few basic adjustments. And here you can see if I take the blue slider underneath the black and white section, you can see we can also, we can already start to make a few nice changes just to bring out a bit of contrast. I'm not going to go too crazy on this, just sort of minus 20. And then while still working only on the background, we're going to make a few other adjustments. I'm going to go to the levels panel and we're going to bring the white point down to, let's see, let's go to around there. Um, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, somewhere around there. And that seems counterintuitive at the moment because it's made the image brighter again. But what I'm doing is I'm just looking at where the information on the histogram ends and bringing this in to make the whites as white as, as possible. And I'm also going to move the midpoint a little bit. And then you can see that we start to see the, the contrast coming back. Again, for this point, I'm not going to go too crazy. Minus 0 0.18 for now. And uh, we'll leave the black point where it is. Another thing that I like to do is to pump up the clarity. I want to take this. I'm not afraid to put in quite a lot of clarity. Um, let's go to around 40 for now. And I'm going to select the punch mode. Sometimes uh, you have to be careful with this. It can look a little bit strange, but I think that the on this image, it, it adds a nice bit of punch. And I'm also going to increase the structure just up to, say, around 12. I'm going to also add a little bit of a Luma curve. And let's see, I want to move this, take this quite a way down. And you can see if we keep going on this, it makes a, a quite a big difference. Um, I'm probably going to go to around there and then increase the highlights a little bit. Again, this is high contrast. I'm looking for high contrast in this image. And so taking this quite a way down, um, not quite so aggressive on the highlights there. I'm also, I'm going to turn on the highlight warnings here so that we can see when I start to go over on any of these things and just bring this down. I'm not going to worry too much if I've got a, a few patches at the moment, we'll control this, but just as a guide. I'm also going to, under the high dynamic range panel, I'm going to just increase this, this a little bit, just to bring the highlights down. Next, I'm going to create a layer and start to work on the sky. And to do that, I'm going to hit the G key to, to get a gradient and draw a mask so that it comes down over the bottom of the sky down to the, to the top of the sea. And holding the shift key will lock it in on a straight line. The horizon's straight, so if I hold the shift key, I can make a nice straight line there. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is I want to make it even less of a gradient. I'm going to just very short gradient there so that you can see that coming across the bottom of the, the sky and down over to the top of the sea. The next thing I'm going to do is add a pretty aggressive Luma curve to this sky again. So remember, it's only working on the sky now. We can take it right down. You see that the bottom part of the image isn't changed. I'm going to make a quite aggressive curve there and just go for more of an S curve. And you can see how this really brings out the contrast in the sky. And that's what I'm after. So also the Luma curve works basically on the, on the luminosity, the brightness of a tone curve against the brightness. I think I'm going to just go to the RGB 
and just take that down just a little bit more. And this will work also on the color. So the blues will, will be taken down a little bit, just a, just a tad there. And that really darkens down the sky. As we do that, we can see that we are going to hold down the space bar and click here to zoom in. You can see that we also have some dust spots showing up now that we're increasing the contrast. So I'm going to hit O for a dust removal tool. And then uh, there's another one over here. Just get rid of those. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit more clarity just to this layer. And again, I'm really just looking to, to bring out the, the contrast. And maybe not, don't need to go to totally crazy. Um, just I want a little bit more. And I'm going to leave it in punch mode there. Looking at the sky now, the only thing that I really want to, to do now is to just bring down the, the brightness of this patch around the bottom here. So I'm going to create a new adjustments layer. And uh, I'm going to hit B for a brush and then increase the size of this brush a little bit and increase the size of the feather on that brush and just draw in a little bit around here and perhaps increase the feather a little bit more. We can do this after the event now as well and just draw over here. And then I am going to just go in and change the feather just to increase that a little bit more. And then hit the M to so that we can see what we're doing here. Again, I'm going to select the Luma curve and I'm just going to drop down the shadows just a little bit there. Maybe pull up the highlights and midtones just a little bit. But you can see that, that we turn that layer off. It just takes down the, the brightness of that patch just a little bit. I quite like that. Maybe reduce the highlights a tiny bit as well. Now I'm relatively happy with that sky. I'm going to brighten up the foreground. And to do that, we're going to create another adjustments layer. I'm going to increase the size of the brush a little bit and take down the feather so that we don't have quite so much feathering. And then I'm going to make a relatively rough paint over here. And I'm not going to worry too much if I go over a little bit because we're going to refine this with the new refine mask tool in a moment. I just want to make sure that I've got all of the snow selected. And we could go through and just fill this, but be quick. We can just paint it over the whole of the foreground. Um, you could also do this with a, a gradient and then refine it. Um, but for, at that point, we see that I've got pretty much all of the snow is selected. And then just to make sure that we we can clean this up. I'm going to right click the mask and I'm going to select refine mask. And we can see that I've already got this turned up. I, I generally I'm using this at like 300 most of the time, but you can see how that will gradually refine the mask and sort of lock it into the, the top of the snow. And we apply that and then take a look. You'll see that because the white in the waves is is also the same color as the snow, it's not it's not done a great job. But where there's a defined line, it's really locked in on that well. So that saves us some work. The next thing I'm going to do is select the. I'm going to hit my E key to select the erase brush, and just take that size down a little bit, and then just quickly go over and remove the parts of the mask that are over the waves uh, just to clean that up. 
doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, so now we've done that, we've got a really nice clean line across the top of the snow. And again, I'm going to apply a Luma curve just to sort of brighten the highlights and leave the, the shadows down low. As we can see, we've got a, a few bits of total black here. This is showing the the blue is showing us the total black. So I'm going to just increase the shadows very slightly to reduce that. And again, that's only affecting the bottom of the screen. So we can see that's nicely effectively increased the brightness of the snow along the bottom. And we've also increased the darkness of the shadows a little bit. And I think actually I'm going to just increase the, the brightness, the bottom of the screen here, the foreground snow across the midtones a little bit more. There we go. And perhaps also just increase them on the RGB curve as well, just to really make this snow a little bit luminous across the bottom. There we go. I think just uh, reduce it down on the luminous a little bit to increase that contrast. And I think that's about where I want this to be. So the last thing that we need to do is go in and remove some of these bits of grass that were poking into the, the bottom of the frame here. And to do that, I'm just going to use a go. Let's make a layer and make it a heel layer. And then with the brush, we can go through and make a selection. And then I'm going to try and use this selection a number of times. So I'll put it somewhere that we can perhaps get away with making more than one selection before it starts to clone itself. There you go. We see now that we've got a little bit of that last one. I've got caught something else. So I'm going to use the Control Z key to get that back. And then I'm going to hit my shortcut to make another heel layer and start the process again. And just try to pull this in to a point where we're not going to get any artifacts copied in. There you go. Look, we got another. We got a a bit of another piece of cloned out grass coming into that. The more I can do of these on each layer, the better, really. So I just keep going until I find myself introducing artifacts. And I think I'll do another layer here. I think that's about it. And with those all cleaned up, you see that that's sort of just refine the photograph a little bit around the borders. So that's about it. How to take this photograph to this photograph in a few relatively easy steps. Thanks for watching.